Good day. Thanks, Sam Bermuda. My name is Chef Janice Steen. I have Chef Raven White here with me as well. Today we're going to be making a bacon wrap pork loin roulade stuffed with a nice winter stuff. It's perfect for the holidays or whenever you're trying to get people together and show off something different. We're also going to be doing a nice red wine pan sauce with that as well. So right now we're going to start with our pine nuts. We're just going to get these to toast in our pan. Right now we have it really hot, almost smoky. We're just going to add these in here. And the most important thing about this is you don't really want to let them burn. It's not the worst that I'm burning not. You just keep them moving and they keep them constantly working in this pan. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to get Chef Raven to dice some mushrooms. I'm going to start off with a nice winter stuffing. Maybe some garlic and some mushrooms. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a nice, fine, almost kind of paste for our stuffing. It's going to cut those mushrooms really small. I'm going to keep these fine nuts in as well. And what's going to happen is that's going to be like the base for our stuffing. Uh, at home, you guys can do this in a blender. It's a lot faster and easier. He likes to be a very perfectionist kind of guy, so I'm going to let him go ahead and do that. Our pine nuts are just about ready here. And what else is going in this stuff? We got some mascarpone cheese here, we got some spinach, we got some dried cranberries. You know, a lot of stuff that just pretty much screams holiday time. Um, you can change up this stuffing and it's very, very, very easy to change up. You can put some ham, different things. We got some onions, some peppers, different things like that. You can use different types of cheeses as well. It doesn't have to be mascarpone. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to keep it simple and light for the holidays. And as you can see, he's just working on his mushrooms over there. I'm going to take off these pine nuts and all because they're nice and toasty. Yeah. And when he's finished with those mushrooms over there, we're going to get those right in this pan as well. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil in here just to keep this pan a little bit loose and not burn it up too much. Nothing worse than a burnt pan in the kitchen, as well as any chef can tell you. Alrighty, and then I'll be ready, dear chef. Mm -hmm. Sometime today would be nice. Oh, it's not. Throw that garlic in there as well. You know, also I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit, throw some fresh thyme in here as well. Just peel off. All you wanna do is just peel off the leaves. You don't really wanna get a stick of thyme in there. I'm not trying to clean our teeth. <laughs> smells and colors coming out of here soon. This is, like I said, this is the first part of our stuffing. This is pretty much the base. It's going to add some meatiness to it, some hardness. You smell that one. Yeah, it smells pretty good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I love the smell of thyme. It's my favorite herb. I can't use any other herb in time. Something my granny always used when I was growing up, especially around the holidays. It smelled like thyme everywhere. Everywhere. Sometimes I tell her you're not tired of using it yet. Very aromatic. <laughs> Alrighty, now we're gonna add in some spinach here. Now this is just already boiled shredded spinach. Really easy to get, really easy to use. Right in there. Now we're gonna add some salt and pepper into here. Fresh and brown soil. Alrighty, and that smells pretty good. Now at this point, you know we're gonna add our dry cranberries in here. You just wanna heat everything through. See the colors are coming through already. Red and green, Christmas time. Not to be cheesy, but of course. <laughs> we're gonna wanna throw this right in the middle of the hair right in the Just dump that right in there. Throw a nice toasted pine nuts in here as well. And now we're gonna add in our mascarpone cheese. Now, if you could stir for me, sir. Same, same spin as well. Throw this nice big block of mascarpone in here. 
And what's nice about mascarpone cheese is it's like cream cheese except without any flavor. So you can add anything to it. It can be sweet, savory, anything. You can put it in any dip. It makes anything creamy. It's like adding cream without having cream. Really nice. Yeah. I think I threw all of it in there. Set that to the side. Now we got our pork line. Now this is a regular pork tenderloin. Now don't go to your butcher and ask for a pork loin. It's a specifically a pork tenderloin. Now this is like the Rolls Royce of pork, okay? So what you want to get this open. And you can pick this up at any grocery store. It's really fun. Just have a little look in your butcher section. slice this about three quarters of the way through not all the way through because we want to have some meat still left so we don't you know, knock completely everything out of it Alrighty, now we're going to take a nice piece of pink tone which I already have cut right here we're going to place our pork on top of that Now this is the fun part, you can get anybody to do this, especially if you're mad with somebody, especially if you just come from work. So if anybody you're mad at, or anybody you think you're going to be mad at, just take your nice, nice big meat knife here. That's what happens when you work in the kitchen. Everybody's kind of mad. Now what we want is a nice even space, so we can put our stuff on there. a half an inch good. This, this is looking okay. What you think, Raven? See that looks right there in the middle. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Somebody would kill me if I didn't season it. A little bit more salt on top of that. One thing as a chef that I tell you is to taste, 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 taste. You know, you can't taste raw pork. So, you just gotta make sure we properly season everything. It's nothing season worse. Every element. Exactly. It's nothing worse than having bland items, right? So we're gonna do some stuff stuffing right here. What also would be nice in there is you know you can throw some nutmeg, and different spices in here as well. Smell like the holidays even more. And what you don't want to do is put too much stuff in there. Now you can keep this as a nice side dish as well. And take this and you pretty much want to roll a little bit over, just like that. And just use the use the cling film to kind of help you out. And then just roll, roll that all the way over. And we want it really tight, so we want to keep squeezing it like that. And we take our ends here and kind of make it really tight. So we almost have a log of pork. Now you're gonna wanna do this about three more times until it gets to about this thickness. But it's not gonna wobble all over. It's still gonna be some white salt, but it's gonna be firm. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get this right in the fridge. Or freezer because you know the freezer always works faster than the fridge. When we get this right in here, you wanna get it nice and cool. Slide it in here. And you wanna keep that in there for at least 20. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes. It's good. When it comes out, I'll show you what it looks like. And it's gonna be nice and nice and firm, and it's gonna be really easy to wrap it up. Baking. Alrighty. So we got our pork out of the freezer now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this wrapped with some bacon. Now what we wanna do here is you wanna, you know, everybody loves bacon, so you wanna get a nice, nice little layer of bacon. You wanna layer these just kind of overlapping the other because you don't want them to be individual. You want it to be like a like a nest almost as such. And you can do this in a lot of different pretty ways if you so wish. Now for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna do it really simple. Because maybe I'm not that talented. I don't think you are. Uh, 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 somebody tell you funny. Yeah. But yeah, here we go. We're just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna get that a little bit of black and some nice pieces of bacon. Now, I prefer to use the thick cut bacon like this. 
that gives you a kind of a heartier wrapping as such. Gives you a nice thicker layer. Gives you a thicker layer as such. Um, we're gonna just keep layering this over. Pretty much the same process as before. Now what you're gonna see is when I unwrap this, you're gonna see how much shape we have here. Hopefully we have a nice, pretty, pretty round cylindrical so thing working here. piece of pork that has been rested in the freezer or the fridge as I said and the same process again you just want to take your cling film and go over with the bacon and then come again and one more time over and then you want to It's tight again. Sorry again, but now we gotta go back in the fridge and we wanna let this rest again so the bacon can nicely set around this so we don't get a nice floppy mess and we gonna put this in this pan. Alrighty, and here we go. Right back in the same place as we did before. And this time is last time. So now we can leave it for about five to 10 minutes just because it's only the bacon that needs to set. Now before we were setting the stuffing and the pork. So now the pork is relaxed and the stuffing is kind of come back together and those flavors have started to melt as such. Now we wanna get the bacon kind of relaxed and solidified so we can get it in the pan and get it nice and hot and sear it and get it in the oven and then we got some good stuff coming. All right, now we're gonna remove our pork from the fridge here, the freezer. As you can see, it's set up really nicely. We got a football now. All right. All right. And now what we want to do is get this out of here again, like unwrapping a present on Christmas. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to get this. Yeah. So that's the sound you want here. You want to place this seam side down. So you want any part where the bacon was overlapping to touch the pan first. Now what's important about that is if when that happens, it won't unravel. So we're going to leave that and let that sit in there for a good little bit. And we don't want to put any oil in this pan as well because all that bacon fat will be all the, all the flavor that we need. And you can see we're already starting to get some of the oil dripping off there. Now, a secret that I like to do, Raven likes to do this as well, is we take some time and some garlic and we're going to smash it. Not too much, dude. Just, just take it and smash. Maybe get one more for it. Just smash it down. And what that does is release all that flavor and pent up goodness that's inside that garlic. And when we start getting the pork and the fat and everything going in here, and we throw some big sprigs of thyme in there as well, it's good party. <laughs> So a nice hot oven which we preheated to 375 degrees. Now you want to cook this until it turns firm and a nice golden brown color or you have so lucky you have a meat thermometer which a meat thermometer should read 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So now you see all that goodness in the pan here that we have yet to use. We're about to use it right now. It's gonna smash it. 
you just smash it together on the court, you can be as a perfectionist as he is and you can, you know, put the ball down. Playing, ain't playing baseball. So throw your garlic in there. You want to get some more thyme sprigs in there as well. Like I said, love thyme. Love, love it. Get that nice and starting to brown. Start getting some of that flavor out of it. You see all these little brown bits all over here. Now that's flavor. As much as anybody told you that's not what you want to eat, that's what we want. We want that flavor out of this pan. Now what we got over here is a nice little Cabernet Sauvignon. You can use any kind of wine you want. Perfect for after holidays if you have any wine left over, anything like that at all. Throw that right in the pan. That's how you go. A little bit more, touch more. Without the hot tool needed, you got the drink. <laughs> Now we want to get this wine in here, we want to get that start reducing and once that's going to build the base of our sauce right now and that's going to build some more flavor. It's going to take all of those little burnt brown bits off, I wouldn't say burnt, those little bits of flavor from the bottom of that pan is going to bring it up and start to get that working and as you can smell, it smells like red wine. Yeah, I think everybody in this room right now can say that there be like a little red wine every now and then. Now what we want to do is you want to burn off as much alcohol out of this as possible because when you're making a sauce, the most important thing is we want to taste the grapes from the wine. We don't want to taste the alcohol. We want the flavor of the grapes from the wine to come through. So with that garlic and that thyme, and now we let that start to reduce. You see all this steam right now is just the alcohol and the water boiling off right now. And that's what we want. After that starts to get a little bit lower, we're going to hit it with some beef stock. Now you can either use chicken stock, vegetable stock, any kind of stock you like. As long as it is a stock, which is just a flavorful liquid that has been boiled with either bones or vegetables. Okay, now, for us, beef stock is a lot more heartier and a lot more stronger than chicken stock. So that's why I prefer to go with that. And not a lot of people use pork stock and you're not really gonna find it in any grocery store that you go to because it's one of those things that, you know, it's not a hot commodity item. So you can either make your own with some pork bones, some water, and I can very easily have a lot of recipe for that. Do you want me to talk? No. And what you want to do here is you want to baste your pork, you know, like you want to get that color all even and all over the pork and as you can see it's starting to turn a nice brown color here. You got Raven in there basting it properly. Good stuff man, good stuff. Looks like I taught you well. It's very hot down here. <laughs> I can imagine it's an oven, so that's not a refrigerator. <laughs> now we're going to remove our pork from the oven. As you can see that bacon's nice and crisped up now. We have some leftover stuff in here, now you want to make it a little bit pretty. You want to get this stuff in, this extra stuff in, which is also a good side dish in there. Get that right on there. As you can see, now it's all nicely held together. Nice fat angle on it. Alright, now when you want to slice this, you want to slice in bigger portions. Because if you slice it really thin, you're going to get this almost not niceness. Okay, get the end piece over there. And then, three slices. I'll turn that around for you guys to see. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And what we want to do, we want to take this and slide that on the end there. I'm going to take uh, three little medallions in there. Nice and put those around there. Which now, after all of that, you're left with this little bit of juice. And then we want to take that and pour that right over the top there. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Instagram at underscore RCW at, at Barbie Food Guy J. Thanks.